Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to do uh, merging of branches in Git. Um, if you watch previous videos, you'll have found out uh, a little bit about why you would want to use Git and the basics of how to use it, including uh, in the last video, um, how to do branches. Um, but now we get on to some of the uh, really powerful stuff you can do with branches. Because um, Git is so good at doing branches and so fast at doing it, um, provides the functionality um, you you will find yourself using branches a lot more in git than you would in some other systems um, so th this will give you a start hopefully this video um, to give you um, the abilities you need to make the most of branches it won't by any means tell you everything you can do but it'll hopefully give you some hints about the kinds of things you can do um, so I'm just going to um, talk again about the situation we're in with these diverged branches. Um, and I'm going to talk about how to do cherry picking, merging and rebasing. So let's uh, dive in. So diverging branches, what I mean is um, there are two or more uh, different versions of the project you're working on. So each of the boxes here um, is a version of your code, your, all of your, your whole source code or whatever you're working on. And then the arrows are changes that happened. So um, in the trunk we've got T1, T2, T3, um, different versions that are going on. So the trunk is just your normal bit, uh, code where you're doing your normal work, you're working on features for the next version. And then after T2, um, we made a branch. Uh, and then there's some uh, uh, different versions um, going on in your branch, which are here labeled B1, B1, and B1. Um, but the main point is you're doing some work uh, in that branch, uh, which is diverging slightly from the trunk. Um, for example, and the example that I'm using here is that um, you gave that version to a customer um, and you made bug fixes for them, but they don't get all the latest features because those features aren't uh, properly tested and ready. Um, so that's one scenario in which you would want to use a branch. There are obviously lots of others. And it, when you use Git, you probably find you use branches a lot more than you would in some systems. So first of all, let's talk about cherry picking. Let's imagine a situation where we want to um, take one change from the middle of the work that happened at one branch and also have it on another branch. So I've changed all my arrows here. So the um, arrows that are red are bug fixes. So as you can see, um, we fixed some bugs in that release branch because we were going to give it to customers. Um, but then also as part of our normal work in trunk, uh, we fixed a bug between T4 and T5, um, uh, but it turns out that that bug fix is also relevant uh, to, this, to the release. So we want to pick up that change and have it available in the branch, and that's called cherry picking in Git's terminology. So let's um, go back into the same source code that we've been um, using in previous videos, um, which is this thing called sayings. Um, and let's just have a look at what I've done since the last time you saw it. So I've done quite a lot of changes in this source code, which I haven't shown you. Um, so if we do a git k minus minus all, we can see what I've done. So basically, um, at the end of the last video, we had a we had a a, a merge uh, of the release branch into the main branch. But now I've made uh, a whole load of new sayings. I've made some pirate sayings, um, and then made some changes to that. And then I branched for release 0 0.2. So here time's going upwards, and you can see where I'm talking about now is this branching point where the two red lines divide um, and go up towards release 0 0.2 on the right and jump up and go up towards master on the left. So in the release 0 0.2 branch, I've made some little fixes to the code. In the master branch on the left, I've gone on adding new stuff that isn't part of that release. But then I've also done this um, change, which has got a red line around it, uh, which is a bug fix, and that's its fixed missing name in surprise expression. Um, we want that bug fix to also get into release 0 0.2 as well as being in master. So the first thing we need to do is find the ID of the commit that we're interested in. So in this case, it's the one that says fixed missing name in surprise expression. So we go onto the master branch where this commit is, and we do a git log. Um, and we scroll through git log until we find the commit we're interested in and then we take a note of its ID number which is this thing 80E8 and so on so on so on um, and we're going to use that so once we've got that um, the hold of that ID 
We then switch onto the branch that we want to um, move the change into, or copy the change into. So we do git check out release 0 0.2, so that moves us onto branch release 0 0.2. And then we just say git cherry pick 80E8 blah 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 blah. And git will pick up that change and put it onto this branch. Um, so if we then do a git log in release 0 0.2, so um, we can see that there's a new commit appeared in in release 0 0.2 and it has a different ID number, it's actually a completely different commit so there's no sense in which uh, the same commit is now on both branches, what's happened is gets um, a, a, taken the changes that you made or that I made in that original commit and it's made a new one uh, it wouldn't make sense to have two different commits that actually have different history uh, Git doesn't let you do that because it, um, in Git's world, a part of the um, identity of a commit is everything that happened before it. So you can't have one commit with different things happening before it. So instead, you get a new commit that does the same piece of work. Okay, so that's cherry picking. Um, another thing that we often want to do is to take the work that you've done in one branch and make it also available on another branch. And um, we call that merging. So here's the same picture again. Um, we've got this branch called release 0.2 and we've also got a branch called master. And we want all the bug fixes that happened in release 0.2 also to be in master. Problem is, some of that work clashes. So we saw the simple merge in the last video. Uh, this is the more complicated merge. So I've made, I've deliberately made two changes here that clash with each other. One is called more apostrophes, which modifies a line. And then at the top of master there, you can see delete unused saying. Um, that deletes the same line that I modified in the other change. So there will be a clash and we'll have to do some manual merging. So um, to tell it to merge, we just make sure we check what branch we're on. So I say git branch and find out that we are on master, which is the right place to be. So if we want to pull in the changes that happened in release 0 0.2 into master, we make sure we're on the master branch and then we say git merge release 0 0.2 and that means take all the changes that happened in release 0 0.2 and uh, also make them available in master um, and what we get is an uh, an error message saying there is a conflict so we're now in a situation where we're part way through a merge um, a merge is just a commit uh, same as other commits except it has two previous states instead of just one. So when a merge doesn't succeed, like what's happened here, uh, that commit has not been uh, committed yet. We're part way through editing a commit. So if we do a git status, um, it says unmerged parts, which means we're part way through a merge. And it tells us that the file southern.txt was modified uh, in both previous commits. Um, we need to do something about that. So, in order to finish off a merge, this is what you need to do. You need to edit the conflicted files um, so that they're not conflicted anymore. Then you need to git add them, and then you need to git commit the merge. It's worth saying at this point, if you're in the middle of this process, don't go off and do something else. Um, if you need to go off and do something else, I suggest you abort the merge, which I'll tell you how to do in a minute, and come back to it later, um, and do it all over again. Um, don't don't try and check out another branch or anything like that when you're in the middle of a merge. You're part way through uh, some edits basically when you're merging. Okay, so what's in southern.txt? Well, if you've used other source control systems, this will look reasonably familiar to you. Basically, um, a, the bit at the top of the file with Gore, Blimey, Charlie, and stuff uh, is the same was the same in both versions, but then the lower down bit shows you what what Git found in two different versions. So you've got the head version, which means the head of the branch you're currently on, which is the master branch, um, which has got where to governor in it and stuff like that. And then um, the lower down bit after the the, low, the set of equal signs um, is the version that's in release 0 0.2. And the line that we're conflicting on is that that line, how's it going, is the one that had more apostrophes added in release 0 0.2, but then it was deleted in master. And that's why Git can't automatically do this merge. So you can, if you want to, go in and edit this file 
and then do a git add and a git commit and that um, you edit it to take out the, the merging markers and choose which bit of the file you want but git provides you a nicer way to do it as well so if you in the middle of this merge you've got these unmerged paths if you type git merge tool git will automatically launch a tool that, um, uh, that allows you to merge um, the changes uh, in a more friendly way um, and, and if you type git merge tool it gives you a whole list of the tools it supports um, including uh, p4 merge which is um, one you might be familiar with if you've used perforce um, the one that a lot of people seem to use is kdiff3 um, it seems really good I'm really impressed with it so it tells you this stuff and then when you hit return it opens up kdiff3 um, and this shows you a view um, uh, that allows you to do this merging in a more friendly way. So on the top left, you've got the base version, which means how this file looks before um, any of this happened. Then you've got um, in uh, in the top middle, you've got the version, uh, the local version, which means the version that's on this uh, branch, so the, the version that's in master, where that line was deleted. And on the top right, you've got what happened to it uh, in release 0.2, which is the remote version. That we're merging in and then at the bottom is the result of merging so when you you tell it okay actually i want the one from uh, the top middle which kdiff3 refers to as, as b version um and then uh, if you do that for all the conflicts in the file and you click save uh then the saved out version will look like that bottom window um, and it will be all merged in so once you click save in kdiff3 and exit git knows that you've succeed you've uh, you're happy with your merge you've finished if you exit kdiff3 without saving um git knows that you um you, you weren't happy with what you were doing and you gave up on it so it won't it won't carry on so let's assume we click save and when we come back uh to the console um we'll find that we don't need to do a git add git merge tool looked at the fact that we'd saved in kdiff3 and it did the git add for us so all we need to do is do a git commit and the merge is finished and that, that merge commit is in history. So let's have a look at the history. If we run git k we can see there's another commit now at the head of master. That commit is a merge commit uh, and it has two lines going into it, the red one and the blue one. One comes from the head of release 0.2 and one comes from the previous latest thing in master. So we have merged together the work that was done in those two branches and there's a commit there that um, uh, represents that merging step. So now master, when we check out master, all the bug fixes we did in release 0.2 will also be there. Or um, if you're in the middle of a merge and things are not going well, you don't understand what's going on, you can abort what you're doing by just saying git reset minus minus hard head. And this is the way you give up on any commit. Um, and it's the same to give up on a merge commit. So what that means is just throw away uh, all of my work, go back to the latest thing on the branch I'm on. Uh, so obviously be careful about doing that, but that's the way you throw away um, the merge that you're working on. Okay, so that's all fine. If you've got two branches that uh, other people know about, um, and you want to merge the work in between them, then you use merge. But there's another way that you can combine uh, the work that's happening on two branches. And this is for a, a different scenario. It's called rebasing. And the situation where this is um, useful is where you're using a branch in your local setup, which you don't really want other people to have to know about. So an example um, of this is that a lot of people who use Git, um, they, they have these things called feature branches where they make a branch just to work on an idea that they're working on at the moment that they're not ready to show to anyone else. Um, they can do as many commits as they want um, in that work and track all of their history and so on and so on, uh, but not show it to anyone else. Um, but then when they want, when they're ready to send it some, to someone else, they don't particularly need that someone else um, to see that they were working in a branch. They actually want that person just to see their changes as if they happened um, in the main branch. Now in the meantime, while they've been doing their feature branch, the main branch um, has been carrying on as normal. So um, it, it, the work that they've done was, was against a different version from the current version on the main branch. So what Rebase does is it replays all of their work 
uh, as if it happened right now on top of the current state of the main branch. Hopefully this will become a bit clearer. So in order to do a rebase, what you do is you go onto the uh, the branch that you're um, that you want to make look like it doesn't exist in some sense, and then you say git rebase um, and give the name of the branch uh, that you that other people know about. So I'm doing something slightly artificial here. Um, I want to be able to compare what happened when we merged with what happened when we re we, we rebased. Um, but normally you wouldn't do a rebase when you're on the master branch. You would do it in some feature branch that you've made um, that that no one else knows about. Normally your master branch would be something other people know about. So bear with me. You probably wouldn't do this. And I'll explain why. Um, but you but if you just think of the branch names differently, you definitely might want to do it. So what you do is you say git rebase. You give the name of the branch. So that's the name of a branch that you want. Uh, to change your stuff so that your stuff looks like it happened after everything that happened on that branch. And if you look at the details there, you'll see that there's a conflict um, for the uh, same reason there was a conflict during the merge. So what I've done here is I've thrown away all that merging work that you saw me do, um, gone back to the situation before the merge, and instead of doing a merge, I'm doing a rebase. In some sense, they, uh, they're trying to do similar things. So before we carry on, let's just say if the rebase uh, doesn't complete successfully, um, you may want to give up on it. So the way you give up on it is you say git rebase minus minus abort, and you just go back to the situation before the rebase happened. The reason there's a special command is because uh, this rebase operation is a bit weird, um, and you're not really on a branch when you're in the middle of this. So really don't go and try and do something else um, while this is going on. If you want to go and do something else, just abort your rebase. Um, and it, you'll be back to the situation before you started. So anyway, in order to um, resolve the conflicts that happened while this rebase went on, you might need to do several merges. So you can say git merge tool to uh, do the merges, and in, in this case I had to do this twice, so I did a git merge tool. Once I'd resolved all the conflicts, I did a git rebase minus once continue, and it said, okay, there's some more conflicts, so I had to do a git merge tool again. Uh, git rebase minus minus continue again and it uh, when it succeeded it just said nothing and that means it's all over so then I can do a git k and see what's happened and what's happened is um, you remember in the previous picture there were two branches that branched off from each other uh, now there's one branch where oh, everything from that branch appears to happen just after release 0 0.2 so master looks like it happens after release 0 0.2 um, so let's compare the two pictures um, and I can talk a little bit about the differences in what's happened. So on the left hand side you've got two branches which um, you want other people to know about and you want them to know that at some point you took the work from release 0.2 and merged it into master. Whereas on the right hand side what we're, what we're uh, pretending is that this master branch um, is, is some kind of uh, branch that you're using for your own personal um, organization but you don't want other people to know about it. So what rebase does is it makes it look like everything that you've done in master happened after everything that's currently on release 0.2. Uh, by rebasing it like that, you then make all those changes ready to send to someone else. So uh, a next step that you would often do once you've done this rebase is to um, merge all those changes, put all those changes into release 0 0.2 from master and then send release 0 0.2 to someone else. So this is a way of basically making master invisible um, to other people. It would make a lot more sense if this was a feature branch rather than master because normally master is something that you are going to be sending to other people. Um, but by um, the reason I've done it in this weird way is that we can compare the two graphs here in a direct way. So as you can see, rebase makes um, the history of what happened look a lot simpler, simpler than it really was in fact, uh, which is cool, it's a really great feature. But um, uh, the big thing about rebase is that it, what you must never do is rebase on a branch that other people have already got, because if we look carefully, um, we can see that on the right hand side we have changed history. So the left hand side has history um, as it used to be, and then with this extra commit on top. So history as it as it used to be and as it should be, um, if other people are looking at your stuff, um, shows the master branch um, branching off from the run related saying, and then the next change after run related saying is 
northern expression of affectionate surprise. Um, and in the release 0.2 branch, um, the next change after rum related saying is apostrophe in governor. Okay. Um, if you compare that with the right hand side, uh, everything is still the same for release 0 0.2. So the next change in uh, after rum related saying in release 0 0.2 is apostrophe in governor. Um, but it's also apostrophe in governor on master. And you have to go through quite a lot more changes before you get to northern expression of affectionate surprise. And, and whereas northern expression of affectionate surprise used to be the next change immediately after rum related saying. So what we've done is we've left release 0 0.2 completely unchanged, but we've changed history for master. And what that means is anyone else who already had that history um, that they pulled from you uh, in their in their version of master is going to see that you've completely messed up what, what they've got. Um, and Git's going to complain very loudly. Um, things are going to get bad. So rebase is for a situation where no one else is looking at your branch. Um, if other people are looking at it, don't do a rebase. Uh, if you're working on a feature branch, you might want to rebase every day against the head of what other people are, are using. And then you know your changes are always pretty much up to date with what's going on on master. And then when you're ready um, to send your work uh, to the other people, you do another rebase and then, you, then it's ready to send to them. We'll talk a bit more next time about how you work with people, um, other people using it. So um, do check out the YouTube page. There's a subscribe button there. There should be one on your screen as well. Uh, subscribe to get more videos. Do check out all the older videos as well. There's a, a load on uh, Scheme Lisp. There's some on JavaScript. Um, even some on Ant. Um, do follow me on Twitter to find out about new videos and blog posts and things like that. Um, have a look at the blog. Um, where I usually put videos up on there and I also um, talk about other things that are of interest to me. Uh, if you want to have a look at um, my various open source projects, have a look at artificialworlds.net. Find out a little bit more about me there. And thanks for watching. <laughs>